Welcome everyone to the Chicago Football Connection Podcast. I'm your host, Steve Letizia. Follow me on Twitter at CBC Bears. Joined by my co-host, Luke O'Grady. Follow him on Twitter at Luke O'Grady. Uh, we've just wrapped up our first padded practice uh, of the offseason. It seems crazy to say that we're already that far. Everybody that close to, this, to the uh, start of the season, but uh, a lot to talk about with training camp. So we yep. even know none of neither of us have been there. So this is all kind of secondhand. Uh, yep. I will be there next week, but we wanted to jump on all and kind right. of discuss what what's going on on Twitter. Some of the what's been the that, scuttlebug? Uh, this the, exactly, exactly. Just going to talk through some things. Uh, so with that, so I think the biggest takeaway that I've seen on Twitter yeah. is that Justin Fields looks to be really taking that next step in this offense. Uh, way more positive reports than negative reports. If there have been any, any negative reports, I haven't really seen them. It's never uh, been like this. It is so right. weird. It's There's always like, yeah, you know, the offense are moving through some things, you know. We should expect them to maybe, like, like you can see, like, what might be able to, to come out of it. But, like, like, almost without fail, every day he's finished and you've heard from people that have been there and the people that were, you know, around the practice saying, you know, they look sharp. They look like they were moving well. Like, they've digested this offense into their second year really, really well. And far and away, the offense has been the better unit than the defense, which I don't know in my time as a Bears fan has ever been the case. At least not – definitely not in the Trubisky era or the dark days of, like, the Brian Hoyer, Matt Barkley days of yore – uh, and it's been exciting, man. And the clips that we've seen ha- have kind of have kind of backed it up. I don't know what to feel. Right. Yeah. I mean, there have been there have been hypes and flashes in the past for for sure. You know, going into every year, there's hype surrounding the Bears' quarterback position, and it's like this yeah. is the year it's going to be it. And you see flashes, but o- overall, you see a lot more negative reports than positive. And this is the first time, like you said, that I can remember that they're far outnumber the positive reports, far outnumber the negative reports. In fact. Like I said, I don't know if there have been any negative reports, but it's yeah. I mean, like... I, I saw Johns or maybe it was Hogue say yesterday that the defense probably won the practice, and that was the first one so far this year that they had won. But even then, like you know, there was the there were like it was riddled with Justin Fields, you know, hit Claypool or Komet on the hands or Tunyon on the hands, and he dropped it, or you know, uh, Brisker or, or Stevenson or Terrell Smith like made an amazing play, but for the most right. part, it 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 has been pretty universally positive around Justin Fields, which is crazy. I saw today um, on ESPN uh, pundit was saying that he expects Justin Fields to be like the breakout player this year. And that's, that's probably one of like six or seven tweets in the last week that I've seen like this. And I was, I I messaged the group chat that we have with a couple of other, our friends on, uh, on bears Twitter. And I was like, it's kind of annoying that when like Justin Fields was working through some stuff last year and his supporting cast was bad and it was his first year in the offense and the defense was bad. People were saying like, "Oh, this guy's a bust. This guy's a bust. He's not. He's not good mm-hmm. enough." And now, like, you know, he hasn't put up a great regular season game. The Bears haven't even really taken the field yet in the 2023 season, and people are already starting to get on the Justin Fields hype train. And it's almost unfair. It's like you guys <laughs> don't get to just go and be a super fan for Justin Fields when you guys were the biggest haters of him before it was fair either. Exactly. Yeah, I do sense that a little bit as well. Like, it's we, we we've bled blue and orange for. Forever, and we've taken Seriously. our long like, Let us have our moment without everyone jumping on the bandwagon. But I will say, I'll take the that that than the opposite. Uh, yeah. You know, so so it is just nice to see. And yeah, I was, I think that was uh, Greenberg who who said that on on ESPN, uh, saying about Justin yeah. Fields. So that that is really exciting. But yeah, bittersweet at the same time is because you know, yeah, everyone's sure. a little protective. But uh, the the thing that you know with. Go, kind of going along with Fields is the Fields to DJ Moore connection. That's what it's been, hasn't it? By all accounts, has been on fire. Like that, that's and today, you know, today, no different. First play of the first like snap of eleven on elevens with pads on practice. Slant route goes sixty yards to DJ Moore, right on right. the money. Splits the D. Like, what is going on? <laughs> this doesn't feel right. real. Exactly, and it it gives off vibes of when the bears traded for brandon marshall and jay cutler and they already had that connection kind of built in i remember mm-hmm. those first days of training camp practices it was all about how jay and brandon marshall were hooking up a ton and yeah and, and they were on the same page already and like it's amazing because fields and, and more have not you know obviously played together until this offseason they've trained together but it seems to me that they're light years ahead of of where that 
connection probably should be at this time. So it's only going to get better from here. So that's really, really exciting to see. Yeah. And, you know, it seems like the person that was the Justin Fields that we're seeing is the one that, you know, he, he looked like in college. He, he was a master of his offense, I think, last year. I think people underestimate the fact that he spent his first two years in the NFL, like his first year he had to learn that new offense. And then when they moved on from Nagy, they, uh, you know, there, was, there wasn't that con- continuation. He had to learn a brand new offense again. So this is his first time in the NFL getting a second year in an offense, like coming in with an expectation and an understanding of the offense where he can do the things in a play. Like he's not worried about where he has to be and what his looks are. He knows where he has to be and he knows what his looks are. So then he can just start to play some football, which is awesome. But even on, even to that, like your point, like I think everybody's been talking about the field more, um, more connection, but it, it's almost even crazier their connection that seems like off the field. Like those guys, it is such a budding bromance, like finishing yeah. finishing each other's sentences type stuff. And I feel like everybody else feels it. Like Kyle Brandt from NFL Network came and did like some interviews for them and just sat them down and had them compliment each other for like three or four minutes straight back to back. And these boys were just complimenting the breaks off each other. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. And I think that's opening up op- opportunities for Mooney and Claypool because those guys have – I've seen their names pop up a ton, especially Mooney. Uh, Claypool's looked pretty good. You see Kovacs yeah. kind of in the picture. Tyler Scott, who I'm sure we, we, we'll probably talk about a lot in here because he's, he's popping out. Tyler Scott and just a bunch of Ty- Robert Tanyans. It seems like they're really spreading the around. And, and I think that starts with that DJ Moore connection because yeah. DJ Moore really takes some pressure off the other guys. Yeah, I mean, we we talked about it. We it's kind of that classic. If Darnell Mooney is your number one receiver, maybe you don't love where you're at. But if Darnell Mooney is your number two receiver, you probably really love where you're at. And and extension, mm-hmm. if Claypool is your third wide receiver, you know you have to really like your wide receiver room because sure. there's high expectations for someone like Claypool. Like you know when, when they talk about his ras, like he's one of one. Like he was the most athletic receiver to come out in a long time. Whatever it is, uh, but it's starting to look like you know he, he's becoming the player that the Bears would have traded like. An, an early second, technically almost like a late round first pick four in that um, like he's looked great in practice and it looks like he's starting to build that rapport with, uh, with fields field is willing to kind of force him the ball and give him some opportunities and tight coverage. And so far, so far it's been so good. I don't think we've seen a whole lot of Mooney. I know that they're being very careful with him mm-hmm. getting him back from injury, but the Tunyon, the Tunyon, uh, uh, the like the re- reviews of Tunyon so far have been awesome. The reviews of Komet have been awesome. People are really loving like the way that Tyler Scott has been separating. And, and this could all be like a factor of maybe the fact that we had the worst defense in the NFL last year, but I don't think that it is. We really revamped the middle linebacker situation and the cornerback seems to be a pretty competitive group. And despite that, the, the response right now at camp has been overwhelmingly positive about that offense, specifically Justin Fields. And I think what we kind of talked about even two or three months ago saying like when we were doing like the schedule review and we were probably a little higher than most, because I think the bears were only picked to win like seven games and we went through it and tried to be pretty fair and still like came away with like nine to 10 wins. And it was because we were expecting the offense to take that step. And it looks like they probably have. Right. Yeah. The, the offense needs to carry this team. Um, like you said, so it's nice to that they're ahead of the defense right now um, uh, because, like I said, they need to carry them. So uh, if they want to win any games. So it is nice to see Fields to Moore's look good. I would say the only negative reports I've really seen have been on, on the offensive line. Yeah. Uh, the offensive line seems to be still a little bit shaky, uh, which I think is understandable. Uh, Nate Davis has, has been injured. Maybe we should mention that Nate Davis starting right guard has been out. Uh, he was out today at least, and has been in and out of the lineup. So, uh, that might be part of the issue, you know, um, oh man, uh, darn all right. has been a little up and down. I'd say that's yep. probably been the most negative reports is darn. All right. Uh, he's had his, some good moments, but a lot of, anytime it seems like there's a negative report, it's, you know, darn all right was beat and it would have been a sack, but Justin Fields evaded and, and, Hit, hit Mooney or something like yeah. that. So I do think the offensive line is still going to be a bit of an issue for the Bears this year, especially early on as, as Don Wright kind of adjusts to the speed of the NFL game. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know if we can expect him to come. I know we can't expect him to come in and just be an all pro lockdown right tackle. He's going to take his lumps, especially early on. So that's just yeah. something to kind of keep in mind. Same with Braxton Jones, the few videos I saw and obviously grain of salt is training camp, but it still looks like he has maybe some of the same issues that we saw last year with, yeah. with anchoring and, and that. So I would say that just, if we're going to be tempering expectations, that's kind of where, uh, 
the reports might not be as positive. But that's something I'm really excited to see next week when I go kind of see for myself. Yeah, uh, to see that uh, is the offensive line. So um, one other thing to know is Roshan Johnson was also out today with injury, uh, which yeah. is something when we were talking about like kind of the uh, the roster in general going into training camp and like camp battles and stuff. We mentioned that uh, with Dante Foreman, like he might be on you know on the bubble if Roshan Johnson can kind of t- take over, but with him being injured, that might open like open up the door to yep. Dante Foreman getting getting more reps there and and staying sticking on the fifty three. Yeah, there's been yeah. I would say that Wright has probably been the r- r- recipient of the most like negative comments. But I'll you know you can kind of offset that by saying there are there have been like those flash comments of like uh, people saying oh like you know that one play there looked like why we got Darnell Wright and like yeah. you know he, he's won over the coaches. He like they've said he he's in the best shape of his life. There was that quote about him like screaming to his head coach like I'll never give up on you or whatever it is. So it yeah. seems like he's doing all the right things. And maybe other than cornerback, I would say that tackle is one of the harder positions to co- trying to come in and, and be an effective starter in your first year. So while he has received a lot of, you know, growing pain type reports, I think we were already assuming that to some extent he was likely going to be our worst offensive lineman, at least for the first half of the season, as he kind of acclimates to the professional game. So it's not surprising. I think yeah. you can, uh, and as far as Braxton Jones, it's like, we really do need to see a big step from him. He's not someone that we can say, ah, you know what, it's okay. He doesn't need to be our best lineman. He probably does need to be our best lineman, mm-hmm. if not a top two, depending on what you view, like uh, Tevin Jenkins. Um, I will say the reports from Tevin have been awesome. He's uh, Apparently he's looked really, really fluid at that left guard position. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, Braxton Jones probably worked on his anchor and things like that all offseason. But it's one thing to do that in the weight room. It's another thing to do it with, another, with a guy, you know, coming, like uh, pushing you back in your lap. So, Hopefully he'll be able to turn some of what he's trained into, into play here soon. Um, Mm. But we probably really won't get an idea of if there's been a regression, if a stagnation, if he's gotten a little bit better there until they play against other teams. And I think that'll probably come when we do those joint practices with the Colts or when uh, that first preseason game comes around. For sure. Yeah. And, and for, for both, everyone along the offensive line, there has not been any really like concerning reports yeah. It's just been a thing here and there, which is like you like you said, expected. Like mm-hmm. it's not like like oh my god, this is coming out of nowhere. You expect your rookies to struggle early on, so nothing. I'm not concerned about Darnell Wright or Braxton Jones yet. Um, like you said, I want to see them in the joint practices against the Colts. I want to see them in the preseason games before. I think we need to hit the batters, but it's way way yeah. way too early for that. So, uh, but it is just something to kind of keep an eye on. I, I do think by time the season starts, Darnell Wright's going to be at least an average pass blocker. Yep. Uh, so not, not too concerned there. Yeah. I think that's kind of why, why the bears made the move that they did to draft him at 10 is the highest they've drafted a tackle in forever. And it's right. because in college, he, he was probably just from a, a pass blocking point of view, the best pure pass blocker in the class. And if he has some growing pains in the run game, hopefully the ability of like Khalil Herbert and Justin Fields will offset that a little bit. But then again, like we said, he doesn't need to be the player we want him to be over his career and his first few months of his career. So, you know, there'll definitely be some growing pains just from the fact that, you know, being a rookie in the NFL is not easy, but it it really has been uh, a play to play thing. It hasn't been like anybody said, Oh, Darnell Wright's been terrible, but you see a clip of Darnell Wright doing something. And someone says, you know, this is something that we got to make sure that Darnell Wright cleans up and it's right, but it's also a play in training camp. For sure, for sure, yeah. Not, not worried. Some other offensive line notes. So with Nate Davis out, Lucas Patrick was taking snaps at the starters at right guard. So that's yep. something to kind of keep an eye on. I did. We have talked about in the past that like depth is the biggest issue for this team. If someone goes sure. down, they're gonna be, and that is a prime example because we know Lucas Patrick. You know, if he has to start seventeen games, that's gonna be especially at guard where he's not as good as he is at center. That's gonna be tough. Uh, Alex Leatherwood was the left guard with the second unit. So it seems like he's making some strides potentially. Yeah, uh, might be someone uh, who may, I'd like to see if if Nate Davis is out for a little bit longer. I'd like to see him maybe a right guard. Same thing with like Jatari yeah. Carter. Kind of uh, rotate those guys in, see what they look like to start with. Because yep. we know what we have with Lucas Patrick. He's a fine backup, but you just don't want him starting. Yep. Uh, so just a couple other things that I that I I saw on Twitter. Yeah, I think the depth of the in, interior offensive line is probably a little bit better than the depth that we have at tackle. I think any injuries yeah. to any of the tackle positions, knock on wood, would be very, very devastating. But the difference between a Nate Davis and a Lucas Patrick I don't think is, is crazy, crazy huge. 
Mm-hmm. So hopefully, uh, you know, Eberflus in typical Eberflus fashion didn't give anybody any info on, on what those were. He just said they were to keep those in house. He said if it was anything extremely long term, he'd let us know. So that's a little encouraging, but hard to tell about the extent of those injuries until, you know, until we get a little bit more info from the inside. Yeah, for sure. So defense has looked, uh, defense has looked okay. It's flashed. Yeah. I would say that, you know, like we said, we expected the defense to be the weaker uh, aspects of the unit, but the things that's encouraging are the players that we're assuming are going to be the best players on that defense seem to be consistently making plays. So we've heard great things about Eddie Jackson. It seems like Jaquan Brisker is taking that step that we kind of in the off season pinpointed as a player that we think would probably take a step forward and, and, and become a leader on that defense. Iberflus gave him a lot of praise today. And as far as the people making plays uh, day in and day out, you know, it's been your Briskers, it's been your Tremaine Edmonds, it's been your TJ Edwards, it's been your, you know, Tyreek Stevenson has flashed, Jalen Johnson has played well, Eddie Jackson, like I said, has, has got a lot of praise so far. So yep. there's, I think there's good players on that unit. There's been some people that I think there's, there's uh, some, some rookies on the team that have flashed at the pass rush position. But like we said, I don't think that it's likely going to be the strength of this team by any means. Yeah, no, for sure. It, but it is nice seeing those those big names uh, get mentioned a lot, like as you mentioned. Uh, so it's good to see those playmakers making plays. A um, couple of, I mean, it's also nice. I, oh, I know what I was going to say. Uh, Tyreek Stevenson, yeah, has been getting a lot of hype. It, yeah, it's it's nice that he's he you know he gets to go up, up gets to he he's forced to go up against DJ Moore every day in practice, yeah. which is a tough draw for a rookie. But it sounds like that's you know kind of what he wants it, it makes him a better player going up against the best wide receiver on on the offensive side of the ball uh for yeah. the bears so it's nice to see that it also sounds like him and terrell smith are in a true like competition for that seriously starting cornerback job which i think is a good thing no matter how you look at it uh, you know i don't want you don't want to hand a job to a second round rookie you know even no. though that Charles smith was a fifth rounder like give him a chance to, to compete it just makes both players better uh, with competition. I mean, I think Tyreek Smith, uh, Tyreek Stevenson will uh, eventually, you know, win out that job just because, you know, they, they will probably give it to the, you know, the draft pedigree, but it's just nice yeah. to see that there's an open competition and they're not just handing the job to someone. Uh, give Terrell Smith a legit chance to win it. And if he doesn't, yeah. he's going to be a good backup with, with who has maybe some experience then. So that's yeah. really awesome to see. Yeah. I mean, Terrell Smith is one of those guys that we got in the fifth, but pretty much instantly when we drafted him, you know, pundits and people that knew about the draft came out and said, the bears are going to, the bears really lucked out. Like the, the fact that he yeah. fell here, you know, you, you can only draft the players. Somebody has to fall every draft, I, I guess, but the, there was a lot of, uh, there was a lot of uh, good, like positivity around that pick. And I think he's played out to, to what we've kind of expected there early. He's made some plays. He forced that turnover that, that people were blowing up on Twitter. Um, he, uh, I agree in that, like, obviously you don't want to hand any one person the job. And by the same merit, man, pressure makes diamonds. Like, I don't mind if yeah. we have to start a fifth-round pick over the second-round pick if a fifth-round pick is a difference maker. Right. You know, if, if they're both, like, if they're both subpar and then you're for, you're just being forced to start somebody, that's a little bit different. But it seems that the, there's, uh, the reports on both of them have been positive. So the fact that they're both kind of getting those looks, you know, I think is only a good thing. Yeah, because who? I mean, if Terrell Smith wins that job, you know who who cares? You know, it, it well, doesn't really I'm, change anything. Now, who cares now where I'm the biggest Terrell Smith fan? <laughs> yeah, who cares where they were drafted? It doesn't make so it doesn't. Yeah. If, if you would have drafted Terrell Smith in the second and then Tyreek Stevens later on, it would have been the same thing. So yeah, yeah. give him a give him a chance. Uh, Kyler Gordon also is. I've seen his name pop up a lot, which is good. Yeah, talked about him as being a guy who really needs a big year uh, after a poor showing last year. So that's that's really good to see. Now he's just focusing on the nickel cornerback side. He yep. doesn't have to learn multiple positions. And which is good because he's such an athletic p- player. Like don't don't make him think too much. Just let him yeah. read and react. Read well. And, totally. Exactly. So it's really nice. Yeah, he's uh he's been he's been a very pleasant surprise because I think there was like he, he I think he did a really good job down the stretch last year. He played a lot better in the last five mm-hmm. games than he did in the first five games. And um, the response from like his teammates and coaches have said he's been like really, really impressive. What's his name? The uh, the our defense, Allen, Allen, um, Allen Williams. Allen Williams was calling him Spider Man. Basically, on what you said, he's so quick twitch muscle, and he's yeah. so like instinctual that the team has been calling him Spider Man because of it. Which you know, I, like, can't be a bad thing. And yeah. then you don't want to get too high on the first week of practice. You know, we've been there before. Right. 
But I think like, and I think someone ran a, a Twitter poll uh, like a couple of days ago that basically said, you know, the reports so far have been that Justin Fields looks he's got a really great command of this offense. Like, what would be better if the Bears snuck into the playoffs and Justin Fields still had a bunch of question marks around him, or the Bears' offense looked great and we didn't make the playoffs? Like, which would you prefer? And it was a landslide. They would prefer Justin Fields to show that he's the guy, even if we don't make the playoffs. And based on what we were kind of expecting the defense to be at, even if we do have that really, really high quality offense, like it's looking like we might, we still might not make the playoff off that alone. You can't have the worst defense in football and be a playoff caliber team kind of thing. But right. it's looking like that'll probably be the shape of what the Bears season is. If the Bears defense is even like even gets a little bit better, like regresses closer to the norm because we were dead last in the, in the NFL last year. We had the worst defense in football last year. If they're a little bit right. better and the offense takes a big step forward, it's likely going to be that situation we talked about where maybe the Bears don't win as many games as we want them to, but I don't think there'll be a week that we go into the season this year and not think, hey, we probably have a chance of winning this. It, exactly, yeah. Uh, I think that that was spot on. Um, and I think what it starts with the cornerback position because we talked about the, uh, when we were doing our positional preview that like the cornerback position, I feel at least, has a very high variance of outcomes this year. It yeah. could be a strength of the defense if, if Tyreek Stevenson or Terrell Smith kind of step up, or it could be a weakness of the defense if Kyle Gordon doesn't doesn't play any better and they, those guys take their rookie, you know, take their medicine as rookies. So it, it's a very high variance. And if they, if Kyle Gordon, you know, makes the improvements that we think he can, and one of Tyreek Stevenson or Terrell Smith, you know, can play average as a cornerback yep. too, as a rookie, and then you have Jalen Johnson back there too, then that's suddenly a, a strength of of this of the defense probably is your defensive backfield um yeah, and that's totally. going to make the the pass rush better if they're able to cover a little bit longer so it's just kind of a snowball effect there so uh yeah so far good reports there too again like you mentioned it's so early so like take everything here with a grain of salt but so far so good uh in regards to the defensive backfield yeah you know you, know, you can never really take uh you always have to take a grain of salt with the reports that you hear like coming out of camp but I remember last year at this time, you know, uh, Eberflus wasn't sugarcoating anything. Like maybe, right. and same with Getsy. Like maybe we thought that, you know, things were looking good in a certain area and we were expecting Getsy and Eberflus to say the same thing, that they were a little bit more reserved saying, you know, there were nice plays, but there's still a lot of execution stuff that we need to be a lot better at. And they were tempering expectations. This year, yeah. there has been no shortage of praise for Justin Fields and that offense from the, those coaches, like when asked about it. And that's really encouraging. I think mm -hmm. there's been like, from people in the know have said that like Justin Fields has, this is his team now. And and maybe that, you know, it was hard for that to be the case with a new regime last year, trying to identify, like, you know, put into place a new culture and first year he wasn't allowed to start over Andy Dalton, but this year, like everybody has said that that team has taken on is Justin Fields team. And has also taken on that Justin Fields, like uh, personality to some extent, like hardworking, level-headed, it's it's exciting. It feels it, it's a very exciting time in in the Chicago Bears world. We said that you know, I think a lot of people have said that the Bears were on a very Eagles esque path, where mm -hmm. you got a young quarterback that was learning the ropes, and then maybe now in his second year in the offense, they'll start to show that they're good enough to compete with some of the teams in the league, and maybe they'll find a way to squeak out enough games and make the playoffs. But this probably isn't you know 2023 and probably not the start of our Super Bowl window, but. If the Bears show that they have something in Justin Fields and they have they've surrounded him with enough talent that you know come come twenty twenty four come coming into the future like it's an exciting time to be a Bears fan for sure yeah it's Justin Fields team everyone in that uh, front office knows it everyone on the field knows it those are really good reports and in terms of like the reports taking the reports with a grain of salt yeah the coaching staff is singing a completely different tune this year but also the media too i, I think it was brendan sugru and i might i hope i'm saying that right yeah uh, tweeted out uh tweeted out like the uh reports on the first day of training camp like last year first what no out kidding yeah and yeah, I, yeah. I mean last year i was i was at training camp like almost every day and it's night and day from what i saw last year to what the reports are saying today like it was bad last year for the offense like no one was getting open. The offensive line couldn't block. There would be some flashes, you know, that you'd see on Twitter, the videos and stuff. But for the most part, it was the defense was winning every every rep or every every uh, drill, I should say. Yeah. Um, so it's nice that it's the complete opposite. So it's it's not only coming from the coaches, it's coming from the media, it's coming from the players. It's just a palpable, you know, feel kind of this year with, with the team and and what's happening 
Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's been uh, another thing that's been really good to hear is it seems like Fields is doing a really, really good job with the quick hitters this year. And I think that probably comes from just uh, being that second year in the offense. He's not having to think about where his guys are and where he should be looking. Once you know where your guys are and know where you should be looking, you have a chance to actually look at the defense. And he's doing those things where, you know, as soon as he snaps the ball, he probably knows, hey, this is going to have to be the flat. or This is going to have to be the running back. And being better in that situation is huge because it's probably where we were worst last year. And mm-hmm. if you can make the defense respect those quick hitters, respect the short game, it's going to play into those big shots, which Justin Fields has that huge affinity for. He loves those deep shots. He loves he, – he would obviously prefer to have that really deep average depth of target – he doesn't love being that running type quarterback. You know, he was asked about rushing for a thousand yards. And he said, hopefully in a perfect world, I don't have to rush for anywhere near that much this year. Cause it was a thing of necessity last year. And if the, if the offense can, can function how it's supposed to, we should see a lot more, should, should see a lot less of that. The, the quarterback running game could likely be supplemented with that quick hitting passing game. Yep. That would be really nice to see. And I haven't seen really any reports of like Justin Fields, Air mail to screen, Justin Fields, like, you know, spike to screen or something like that. I haven't yeah. seen any of those. That doesn't mean it's not happening, but uh, it does seem like, yeah, those quick hitters are, are coming a little bit more natural this year, hopefully. I did see one video. It was not not so much a quick hitter, but it was just a kind of a quick slant to DJ Moore. It's like the first play of practice today, I think, yeah. uh, which was right on the money and, and oh. ca- caught in stride. It was just beautiful. A um, couple other other guys who... Uh, one guy I, in particular I really want to mention is Gervin Dexter. Um, mm. First day in pads today. Apparently he's the reports. I remember uh, Lester Wolfong from from uh, uh, Windy City of Grand Iron specifically mentioning that his get off did not seem to be a problem. He was looking quick and fast and yeah. strong and kind of moving guys around. So uh, there are other guys who kind of reported the same thing. So that's really good to see. It almost I, I'm actually like even more excited about him now. He's going to be one of the guys I'm specifically looking at next week to kind yeah. of see. Uh, hopefully I go on, I don't, I don't know what days are padded practices, but hopefully I go on a padded practice day. Uh, Cause I really yeah. want to see more of him. And then Zach Pickens, I haven't seen a lot about him until today, but today he had some, some good uh, press. So two rookie D tackles look to be playing pretty well too. Obviously there's, you know, going to be a learning curve for all these rookies for sure, but positive, you know, better have positive uh, reports than negative reports. So I'll take it. Yeah. He refused, uh the time to kind of talk about Dexter today he said that you know he doesn't think that Dexter fully has a grasp of what the role is and it's a pretty different role than than what he played at Florida and even then has still kind of flashed so that that you know that's a real positive and on top of that I think we uh we did we signed ourselves a defensive tackle today we, we used that yeah. first uh waiver priority for um for Bravion Roy which is nice right. because it just adds more depth to it we do, I think one of the issues that people were saying is that Dexter was playing a lot at Florida and was probably a little bit gassed. If mm-hmm. we can just keep the rotations light and make sure that he knows his responsibility when he is going to be playing, it does seem like he can be a different maker, which is huge. Right. Yeah. And, and Roy is a, is a true you know, like nose tackle. So he would be a guy who kind of can give Dexter a spell um, yep. because he's, he doesn't really provide much pass rush, but he can stop the run a little bit. So he can play maybe on early downs, bring Dexter who is a lot more athletic has more pass rush potential and, on a later downs um, and give yep. him a spell a little bit. So, yeah, so that was good to see. Um, kind of, it's always, I just like that there, it always seems like Polls is just constantly overturning the bottom of the roster, which I love. Oh, it's a great. He's way to never that. just like, he's never just con- content. It's like, okay, this guy's a slight upgrade. Let's, let's just get him. You know, he might not even make the team, but let's, let's just, you know, see what he's got. Uh, if he doesn't, we'll cut him and we'll, we'll, we'll move on to the next one, but just constantly churning that. I love that. Yep. Yeah, totally. No, it's been good. I mean, it's very it's very rare that there's been this much positivity uh, going into like this early into the, into the training camp. It's funny to think about last year at this time, the defense was winning a lot more than the offense and the defense went on to be one of the worst defenses in football. <laughs> so it's yeah. like jeepers like that's it just, you know, that's kind of where it's at. But we've said it before. There's so much to be said about continuity and the fact that uh, we're, we're keeping three out of the five starters. And uh, for the fight, like, uh, and and we're keeping the same offensive system. And the only thing that's really going to change as far as like uh, uh, offensive personnel or the skill position players is they added themselves a true number one with with Darnell with uh, with DJ Moore. And the new starting running back is DJ Montgomery uh, is Cleo Herbert over DJ. Uh, sorry, David Montgomery. And 
you know, I think last year the stats would say that, you know, Khalil Herbert was, was the more effective running back. And it's just hard to find a real worrisome point about the offense right now, which in mm-hmm. itself is alarming. And I guess we should probably knock on wood for, like you said, yeah. you know, maybe we still have to worry about the offensive line. But so far, it's been a very, so- very – uh, encouraging first couple practices for that for this for this Bears team. Mm-hmm. Uh, one other guy I, I want to talk a little bit about on the offense, and then we can kind of wrap this up. But I do want to talk about more about Tyler Scott, though. Um, I did mention mm-hmm. earlier, but he, uh, by all accounts, just looked like the real deal. Um, and I actually went back to one of our podcasts we did pre-draft when we just talked about wide receivers, uh, and both of us were just like spot on about like the Tyler Scott thing. Like, just you mentioned, just like the when he's hip to hip to guys, like he's gone. When, yeah, if he's hip to hip, yeah. he's open. He's open, right? And that's exactly what kind of what we've seen. We've I haven't seen the only videos I've seen of him are downfield passes, and he's catching them, getting behind the defense and making a play. And like that's exactly what we said he would he would be by whatever team drafts him. This was before the Bears drafted him. He's going to be a deep threat right away who can maybe develop into something more. But I I just think he's going to be a perfect fit in this offense, and I think he's going to see his um, his role expand as the season goes on. Um, you know, if there's any, if Mooney or Claypool or God forbid more get injured, you know, I don't think they're going to miss too much because uh, Tyler Scott could possibly take on a bigger role. But it was fun going back, seeing all these reports and like going back and seeing kind of what we said about him pre draft. And uh, so that was pretty cool. I, I'll probably link that podcast down here if, uh, in the comments if anyone uh, wants to, to listen to that. But yeah, he, he's been. He's been a really nice ad for them. A, 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 yeah. a different type of receiver they have. Because Mooney's a deep threat, and DJ Moore, both of them are deep threat. Even Claypool, they're all three of them are deep threats, but they don't have, besides maybe Mooney, especially Claypool and Moore, don't really have that deep like, breakaway yeah. speed. And Mooney is so shifty underneath, you want to use him there. So it's nice to have a guy who could just take the top off the defense, open things up in the middle of the field for Mooney and Moore yep. and Claypool. So really, really excited about the reports from him so far. Yeah, totally. I mean, you were higher on him than most. I think you had him as a top five receiver in the draft. And I, even the, I didn't agree, and I don't even think I had him in my top ten, but I get why. And I'll say that something that's even more encouraging is the reason you, you were able to have him so high is because, at the very least, he was going to be an incredible deep threat. Right. So, like, looking at some of his short, like, short, uh, like uh, short yardage route running and uh, change of direction has been really, really encouraging. He isn't just mm-hmm. a straight-line guy. Like, he's a football player. And it seems that Justin Fields has a good relation with him pretty early on. There's also been, man, I tell you what, the response so far uh, around Valus Jones, the the comments mm-hmm. that have been made about coaches around him, we probably still will see him be like the fourth wide receiver, fit, probably fifth wide receiver on the depth chart behind Tyler Scott. But yeah. um, there were comments made that he really looks like, you know, a stud at the return position. He doesn't look like he's stressing about catching the ball anymore. Look, they were saying that he looks comfortable in that role and that he's catching it and now thinking about the next thing up. And there has been, you know, a fairly good stream of offensive highlights for him as well. Like he doesn't look like he's being a T-Rats catcher and he looks like he he's looking like he's doing a good job of 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 uh, remedying some of the issues and concerns that people had being a third round pick two years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's all I need from him. Just catch the ball, catch punts. Uh, don't drop punts, and if you can provide, you know, two, three touches a game on offense, yeah. that's fine too. But just – Play special teams, don't overthink things, and yes, but that's been that's been positive too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Overall, very good. Other thing I just want to mention real quick because I, I just remembered, but back to the wide receivers, I saw a snap with Mooney uh, coming out of the backfield. Darnell Mooney mm-hmm. lining up at, out of the backfield and doing doing just like a little option route on the backfield, yep. which I, uh, in uh, this that was uh, in the red zone, kind of on like the five yard line, which I thought was a really creative way to, to use him, and I think I really hope we see that kind of. In the regular season, is that that be that's kind of because uh, what happened was you got him matched up one on ones versus T.J. Edwards. T.J. Edwards is a good coverage linebacker, but he's not. No linebacker is going to be able to cover Darnell Mooney one on one. There's not a no. single linebacker in the NFL to do that. So getting those mismatches is going to be important. I'm sure the Bears will have that video taken down very soon. Uh, but it was nice to see on Twitter. Yeah, the uh, I mean, I think. Uh, um, uh... Nagy, Nagy, a, a couple of years ago, used to have some sets where he would put running backs mm-hmm. in the backfield. I remember even there was that game against the Packers. I think they put Demir Bird in the backfield, and he just ran a little angle route on the on the linebacker, and he took it for a touchdown. There was a cool, yeah. uh, there was a cool uh, little graphic about which gets you more like expected points added per play, 
putting running backs in the slot or putting wide receivers in the backfield. And there's actually like a really, really good wealth of data that says wide receivers in the backfield really, really do provide problems for, for defenses. And it would be cool if the Bears were one of the teams that were on that trend a little earlier than most because it looks like the yeah. data exists, but we haven't seen the shift of really taking advantage of it. And we'll probably see that this year with teams that are like, you know, more data driven teams or teams that are like mm-hmm. paying attention to stuff like that. And it would be really cool if the Bears were one of those teams that try and be on the forefront of trends. Yep. I mean, we've seen the 49ers do it with Debo Samuel. Yep. Uh, I think the Dolphins did it last year with uh, Jalen Water and Tiger Kill. Uh, with the smart, all the, the smart offensive playmakers are, are doing it. So exactly, like if, you said, uh, you, you want Daniel and the, and the 49ers are doing it. You're they're probably on to something. Yeah, and you you want to do it early before the the league catches up to it because eventually the league will come up with a counter, and then the teams that are still doing it after the defense have already countered. Yeah, those totally. Are the those are the, are not the coaches you want. So hopefully, everybody else is starting better. to put receivers in the backfield, and the 49ers are going to start going big running backs and fullbacks. And you're like, these guys are crazy. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right. All right. I think that's anything else. Probably, I think, I think we're good to do for today. So uh, just one last thing, the sponsor. So this video was brought to you by uh, 366 golf. Use promo code CFC at checkout for 50% discount on all apparel. I'll put the link in the comments or in the description for anyone who wants to take advantage of that. Uh, um, I use their clothes all the time. So it's, it's re- really encouraging. Uh, be great to support the show. Um, yep. Other things, kind of wrap up things. I will actually, I will be at training camp next week on Wednesday. So sick. Only going one day, so we'll do. I'm assuming we'll do a show like Wednesday night. We'll kind of talk about what I saw and everything. But I'm really excited yeah. to go down there. If anyone's going to be there on Wednesday, feel free to stop me and say hello. Love to meet some people. Yeah. Uh, so really looking forward to that. Uh, besides that, make sure to share the video, like, subscribe, all that stuff, and we'll talk to everyone next week. Thanks for listening, everyone. Bear down. Bear down.